Wadworth Swordfish Rum Infused Ale. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have got another one from the fantastic Wadworth Brewery and it is their Swordfish Rum Infused Ale. Now this is a special one because the name, first of all, I'll go through the name. Swordfish, it's named after the Fairy Swordfish aircraft. Now, if you're not into World War II, if you're not into aviation history, skip forward because this is going to be fucking boring for you if you're not interested, all right? But if you've remained here, then buckle up, because this could take a while. This was named after the Fairy Swordfish aircraft. Now, you know, if you're into this sort of thing, you've probably you've heard of this aircraft. It is certainly, well, it was when I was growing up, it was quite a famous aircraft. It holds the record during World War II for sinking out of any plane, Allied plane, I think, I could be wrong. It's either British or Allied, could be wrong but it holds the record for sinking the most tonnage of shipping. And that's no mean feat when you consider its antiquated looks. Now, if you can see it on there, here's a picture of it. Now that looks like something out of World War One, doesn't it? But it wasn't, it was introduced in 1936 and it was immediately obsolete, more or less obsolete when monoplanes, certainly when the Germans, when World War II started, you know, the Germans were using high powered, fast fighter aircraft and you know dive bombers etc this plane it just it, it really didn't have a place it was designed as a, a a biplane bomber but yeah it was it was immediately obsolete but they decided to keep hold of it and while they were trying to come up with a replacement for it it was put into service in the fleet era and it was a carrier based aircraft and it actually did quite well it, it has to take credit for sinking the Bismarck because it, they, called it, they called it the string bag. And the reason they called it the string bag, it wasn't because of its looks or you know the struts and the fabric that was used to make it. I mean, again, I'm, it had a steel shell, but it was all covered in fabric and string, etc. Well, it wasn't string, they were wire hawser type strengthening struts, etc. And what happened was they they couldn't come up with anything that was effective. It was perfect as a torpedo bomber and the fleet air arm absolutely loved it. Now, if you look at the, again, if you reference the picture of it, if you were a crew member, it wasn't a very happy life because you were totally exposed to the elements. And if, if you were shot down, there was virtually no hope of survival. The, the swordfish was employed during the Battle of the Atlantic. So if you were shot down in the North Atlantic, even in the summer, you had very little chance of survival, but that was the risk they took. And I, you know, I really do respect all them old fleet air arm pilots because they knew what they were getting into. It's probably one of the worst jobs ever. They were slow moving. They were just targets for anti-aircraft, German anti-aircraft and fire, but they still carried on and they were devastating against German shipping. And as I say, the Bismarck, that was disabled by the uh, torpedo of a swordfish bomber and the rest is history. It was sunk, it was basically disabled, it couldn't move, it couldn't steer and the Royal Navy just closed in and demolished the ship basically. And you have to, the swordfish has to take credit for that. And I have a friend who lives down the road and his dad was in the fleet air arm. He was a mechanic and he worked on swordfish aircraft and I think everybody connected with it who flew them, who worked on them, they absolutely love it. You just have to look at the interviews of the old pilots and the mechanics and the people who worked around them to see how affectionate they were towards the plane. And they didn't really find an effective replacement until the end of the war. That's how good a plane it was. So this really is a, 
a fitting tribute to it. And if if there was a plane worthy of a beer, and you know, everyone goes on about this Lancaster bomber, this Spitfire, I don't think it's a hurricane. And it's funny, the Germans don't do any beers celebrating their planes, which is unusual. <laughs> anyway, this is definitely worthy of a of a beer. And what I like about this, it's rum infused. And what it what Wadworth say they've done is they've infused it with uh, Pusser's, that was the name of the company, Pusser's Rum. Now, the significance of Pusser's Rum, that was issued to the sailors of the Royal Navy during World War II. And I think up until the 70s, I think it was up until the 70s, possibly later, that the rum ration was issued to sailors during, during their service. And, you know, sometimes I'll say, you know, the sun is over the yardarm, and that basically is an old naval term, which means it's time for a beer, effectively. And that was an old saying in the Royal Navy because the yardarm on the old sailing ships was the, the one that was in front, and if the sun was above it, that usually meant, especially in the North Atlantic, that it was past midday. Um, and, you know, <laughs> when I'm in meetings at work, <laughs> I always send messages to people saying, is the sun over the yard arm yet? It's basically code for, fuck this, let's have a beer. But there you go. Quick word about Wadworth. I've reviewed some of their stuff on the channel, and they're a really good brewery. I like what they do. Recently reviewed the Bishop's Tipple and the Old Timer and the 6X. Fantastic stuff. Got this in a pack that costs 32 pounds. Really looking forward to it. Let's get it open. Let's see what's going on. Right, now, I'll, before I do, I'll just give you a quick rundown on what's in this. 5%, 500 ml bottle, swordfished, best enjoyed at room temperature. It is more or less at room temperature now. Uniquely blended from uh, Wadworth beer and Pusser's rum, that's what I was talking about before. Swordfish hints the mysteries of long sea voyages and distant ports. And they forgot to mention bombing the shit out of German shipping. Tasting notes. A note of gentle rum... A nose, sorry. Fucking hell, go. come on. Oh, it's a lovely day. Yes, indeed it is. A nose of gentle rum notes with a warm hoppy edge, a full bodied ale with rich smoothness and caramel overtones from dark unrefined sugar and rounded and a rounded hot finish. Yeah, the unrefined sugar they're talking about usually relates to invert sugar, which is, it's, it's, basic, it's not like candy sugar. Candy sugar is different. Candy sugar is beet sugar. This is cane sugar. And if I was gonna give you an example of what it'd be like. If you can imagine molasses, it's vaguely like that. It's not molasses though, so don't get that into your head that they put that in there, and it's certainly not the Belgian candy sugar either. But yeah, it looks quite interesting. It's 5%, so it's about standard for this type of beer. Let's get it open, and let's see what's going on. Now I have to admit, I'm not a fan of rum, and I have tried rum-infused beer before, and it was French. And lo and behold, it was shit. Fancy that, French beer being shit. There you go, silver cap. The French should not be allowed anywhere near a brewery. If anybody knows of any good French beer, please put it in the comments and I will review it and I'll be as objective as possible. If it's nice, I will tell you it's nice, but if it's shit, you'll know about it. And believe me, I've tried a lot of French beer. I've not had a good one yet. They just don't get things right. They may be good at wine, but who the fuck drinks wine? Men don't order wine, all right? Blokes, if you're a bloke and you drink wine, you need to have a long, hard look at yourself. Blokes don't drink wine. Not if you're British, anyway. You shouldn't be drinking wine. There you go. I've 
massively fucked up that. I've put a huge head on that. What we're getting on the nose. Yeah, you can definitely get that sugar straight away. Now they're saying caramel malt, and I'm pretty sure it is caramel malt, but that extra invert sugar on the top is making it, and the rum as well, is making it taste, or is making it smell a little bit like a, a little bit like toffee malt. But you can definitely get that sugar. Oh, I am getting notes of that. Smells reasonably good. It's definitely different, I will say that. Head retention is good. Now this has got crystal malt in it, so it's gonna be relatively sweet anyway, but it's also got the Fuggles, Hops, and Goldings as well. So typically British. It smells quite nice. There is a, like a, I would say burnt, like a roasted note to this as well. And I'm assuming that's coming from cross between the rum and the sugar. It's giving it that sort of rich, sweet and I'm you know I'm picking it up as toffee malt but I know it's not toffee malt that is the adjuncts that have been put in here now whether there is rum on this or not I don't in this I should say I don't know but that's what they're saying but I'm definitely getting the invert sugar and there it is head retention is really good there it is in the glass very dark brown chestnut color smells great let's see what it tastes like Bottoms up. Mm. Full bodied. And I have to say, I'm picking that up as toffee malt. They're saying it's caramel malt. Oh, the finish on it. That's coming through now. That was a late finish, quite bitter, spicy, bitterness from the Goldings and the Fuggles. Mmm, nice, I like this. Now that has been refined or filtered, if you like, as clear as a bell. So it's not bottle conditioned. Oh, it's really good. Mmm. That is good. It's got a big hop finish on it. And they didn't really make a big thing about that, but you really can get them hops on the end of it. The invert sugar and the rum are giving it a, a quite a complex malty flavour, if you like. It's quite sweet and there is very subtle notes of rum. It's not massive. I'm getting more sugar than I'm getting rum. There is some malt on it, but it's, as I say, and I'll say this for the last time, you're probably sick of hearing it, it's coming across as toffee malt, but I can see that it, you know, without them, the sugar and the rum, it's pr probably is caramel malt trying to get through there. The invert sugar does give it a bit of a sweetness and I can probably see what I've done it as well because the hot bitterness is balancing it out on the palate. But then you do get a, a cross between the earthy, peppery British hops and the sugar sweetness. And that sugar has been heated up. You can get a bit of a, as I say, a molasses type flavour. It's subtle though, it's not big. And there is a bit of fruit on there as well, but it's way in the background. They're definitely right about the room temperature. Yeah. Now this was in the fridge. It's been sat there for about 20 minutes. It's quite warm in this room. So that has gone, gone down to about room temperature. And it is, that is the perfect, I think. Cellar temperature, when they say room temperature, I'm 
sort of perceiving that as cellar temperature and that's what that is if you can imagine the very subtle chill on it i think that's what it needs and i'm getting all the flavors from it it's really nice i do like this this is this is another good one from wadworth One thing I will say, I don't think I could drink too many of these because the invert sugar, as it goes down a little bit more, it comes to the fore a little bit more and you've sort of, I wouldn't say you're getting tired of it, but I can imagine after three or four of these, it'd be, for my palate anyway, it'd be a little bit too much, but one or two, it's just full of flavour, you know, and it's it's nicely flavoured as well, I think. But for sessioning, I think a lot of people would, well, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but me personally, I'd struggle a little bit with it. That sugar in the rum would start to feel like, oh, I want to change now, if you know what I mean. But it's lovely. And I've, just to hammer that point home, I've just reviewed the Hofbrau House Dunkel export beer. Now, what I found with the Hofbrau House was that it wasn't big on flavour, it wasn't big on aroma, but it was super drinkable. And this is the other end of the spectrum. This is just bursting with flavour and aroma, but it doesn't have the drinkability of the Hofbrau House stuff, and especially the Dunkel. So if I was going to be on a, a bit of a binge, and then the, the, the ABVs are fairly similar. I think the, the Dunkel, the export Dunkel was 5.1 or 5.2, something like that. And this is 5%. So, you know, it's, it's very similar. And if I was going to be drinking a fair bit of it, I'd be going for the Dunkel all the time. But if I just wanted a couple of beers, but I wanted big flavour, this is the sort of stuff I'd be going for. So what's the verdict on Wadworth Swordfish? Well, apart from being a great beer to, or a great aircraft to name a beer after, and just while I do it, they give 5p to a, a naval charity from every bottle that's sold, so, you know, you can't go wrong with that. But the beer itself, yeah, I love it. I really do like the taste of that. It's a typically British beer, and it uses typically British adjuncts certainly the invert sugar the rum not so much you don't normally get rum infused beer but they've got it right and i think and, I, and i'm comparing it with a beer that was bought in little at the time it's a fucking massive bottle it cost about two i should have known the signs were there they had a big poncy black bottle with gold trim on it i actually reviewed it and I had, to, I had to, I didn't put the video up, it was just me going into a rant, and I was fucking, uh, at one point I was saying, and Charles de Gaulle, he's a and all, you know, stuff like that, and I just think, people don't want to hear that when they're, <laughs> they're hearing reviews about beer, but there you go. Anyway, uh, this is really nice, I do recommend it, as I recommend all the beers I've tried so far from Wadworth. Now, I've got a few more Wadworth beers, in the fridge and downstairs. This, the Bishop's Tipple 6X, three fantastic beers. The old timer was good as well. I don't think it's the best old ale I've tried, but it certainly wasn't bad. And this one, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. And if you like big flavor, you're gonna love this. If you want a session beer, I would say avoid it because after four or five, I. This is just personal taste, but the invert sugar for me would get a little bit too much. You know, that sweetness, I'd be thinking, oh, I, you know, almost want a West Coast IPA just to cleanse the palate, or even a lager just to cleanse the palate. But it's nice, you know, there's no denying that it's a great beer. And it's very popular as well. This was originally brewed for the 100th anniversary of the Fleet Air Arm, but it became so popular they just thought, bucket will carry on same with the bishop's tipple as well so you know carry on wadworth doing your commemorative beers because they really are good 
and that's refreshing to see a brewery that does commemorative beers but takes real pride usually commemorative beers they think oh it's only a small batch we'll do something and you know that'll be it nobody will hear of it again but yeah that's that's when good things happen that's when you take a bit of a bit of a care you know that's when you have a care when you when you're brewing that you can turn out stuff like this it becomes so popular that it becomes part of your core range superb so for me that is eight out of ten that is recommended wadworth stuff so far hasn't let me down rapidly becoming a favorite of mine in 2021 so there you go and remember beer is working class champagne